So for me, the amazing thing about Cristiano is that he's redefining the age barrier for professional footballers. All the strategies, all the sacrifices, all the habits that he creates to lead him to that position is what we're going to check out in this video. Stay tuned. Hey guys, Khalid here. Welcome back to Clinical Physio. So what can we learn from Cristiano Ronaldo in terms of his habits, his performance and his lifestyle that we can then translate into our own athletes, into our own patients to help them get the very best out of their sporting careers as well? Let's start with exercise. So we all know it, Cristiano trains all the time. He's doing cardio, he's doing strength work, he's doing flexibility. Now in terms of his cardio, we know that he runs, we know that he cycles, we know that he does things in the pool. But it's not necessarily what he does, but more how he does it. It's the intention behind his training. Every session he does, he aims to make it difficult for him. And that's because in order to make long-term changes to our heart, our lungs and our cardiovascular system, we need to be stressing the body. That creates that physiological change that leads to the long-term improvements in our fitness. So he will run at an intense pace. When he does his work in the pool, he'll be doing it at such a speed that makes him work really, really hard. There's no point doing a gentle jog and expecting big changes out of it. So how do we work this out for cardio? Well, we can look at things like your heart rate versus your maximum heart rate. So maximum heart rate calculation, 220 minus your age, and that gives you the maximum heart rate. Now you can work at a moderate intensity of exercise where we're looking at working between, let's say 50 and 70% of our max heart rate, or you'll definitely want to have some sessions like Cristiano does where he's working between 70 and 85% of his maximum heart rate. That's definitely going to lead to those physiological changes that makes him at an elite level. So flexibility. We know that Cristiano engages in important activities such as yoga in order to maintain his flexibility. But we also know in the sporting world that doing eccentric strength training is as effective as static stretches at maintaining flexibility in the long term. Term. There's plenty of studies that have shown that and if you want more on this, check the link in the description below. And the other thing about eccentric strength training that's better than static stretches is that it also gives you strength. So we're a big advocate of that. And then on to pure strength training. We know that like all footballers, Cristiano is going to be working on his quads, his glutes, his hamstrings and his calves. But one thing we really wanted to point out about Cristiano is his speed and power. Do you notice how he outjumps so many footballers when he's heading the ball, even in his older age? That's due to his ability to harness speed and power together. And when we think about a training regime for this, plyometric training absolutely stands out. So this is going to be high explosive activity work, things like squat jumps and things like lunge jumps. Now, reps and sets for plyometric training is going to be lower than your other strength training. You might do it two to three times a week to give you plenty of rest time. You might be doing three to six sets of a low number of reps, maybe up to five repetitions in order to really harness a small amount of time with lots of energy. So what about nutrition? Well, we know that Cristiano's always prioritised nutrition. He doesn't drink alcohol. And who can forget that infamous moment at the European Championships in 2021 when he moved that bottle of Coca-Cola to the side, telling the world that you should drink water instead. Well, actually, those habits make a huge difference in terms of the right fluids he uses for healing and recovery. And then when it comes to his food, he demonstrates that he eats a Mediterranean diet, which is said to be the best for musculoskeletal recovery and development. So this diet is going to be high in protein, particularly fish, and it's going to be full of rich, wholesome, organic vegetables. And the vegetables form a major component of his meal, rather than just a small amount on the side like most of us do. Carbohydrates do feature, but it's about the right carbohydrates, the complex slow release carbohydrates. So here we're thinking about whole grain cereals and breads, fresh fruit and vegetables and low fat yogurt. So Cristiano is known to consume 3000 calories per day, whereas the average calorie consumption for males is 2400 per day. But of course, the difference is that he's doing so much exercising, all of that training under intense conditions that he needs that fuel in order to function. If if he didn't, then he would actually be at more risk of injury. And the evidence of the success of his nutrition and his exercise is clear to see in terms of his body shape. When he joined Juventus at age 34, he was described as having the body of a 20 year old. 
he had a body fat of 7% compared to the average footballer of 10%. He had muscle mass of 50% compared to the average footballer at 46%. And of course, this is all at the age of 34. If you compared him to all 34-year-old professional footballers, he would absolutely be winning. And then on to recovery. One thing you hear about so many professional athletes is how they prioritize recovery. They make time for recovery. And Cristiano absolutely does that in his busy schedule, in between his training and, of course, his matches. So one way he does this is with strategic sunbathing, making sure that he gets plenty of vitamin D during the day. He uses cryotherapy, particularly the use of ice rooms, as you can see here, which allows him to focus on his muscle and cardiovascular system recovery. And we also know that he uses hydrotherapy, simply relaxing in the water to try and help with his recovery as well. However, one thing that's really interesting to Cristiano is his sleep patterns. He's told us that instead of having one 7.5 hour period of sleep, he actually splits it up during the day, having five 1.5 hour periods of sleep during the day. This is super interesting. It obviously allows him to rest more regularly during the day, but also keeps him awake and alert that he doesn't get too tired at once. Very interesting. But of course, it's also the way he sleeps. He doesn't sleep on the sofa. He doesn't go to bed and play on his phone for an hour like most of us. Instead, he prioritizes his sleep, choosing the right environment, the right routine, allowing him to get that quality sleep. And in sports and athletic performance, we're learning more and more that quality sleep is super important for recovery, for bone healing, for muscle tissue healing. So it's absolutely something to focus on with your athletes. But I wanna finish off with the key thing, and that's his mindset. He is so laser focused on maintaining the consistency of all of these things all year round. So even in his off season, he's still gonna do an element of exercise training to maintain his body physique. He's not gonna suddenly change his diet because he's on holiday and eat loads of rubbish food and drink loads of alcohol. It's that consistency, those habits, those sacrifices of doing those things day in, day out over the length of his career, which has made the ultimate difference and allowed him to play football at such a high level for so long. So guys, if you've enjoyed this video, please support us by smashing that like button, subscribe to the channel for all our best updates, follow us on social media like our Instagram account at Clinical Physio and check out our website clinicalphysio.com which has got loads of brilliant resources for you. My name's Khalid, thank you so much for watching, see you really soon here on Clinical Physio.